Yo, what's going on guys? Happy here now. Back. Today we're going to be going over 17 things only Clash of Clans OGs may remember. Part 5. Part 5? Where the fuck have I been? Yeah, I started this series a while ago, so I wouldn't be surprised if a lot of you haven't seen the last four episodes. I highly recommend them though. We talked about some very nostalgic stuff, but they're not in order, so just watch this one first since you're already here. <laughs> Playlist will be at the end of the video and links down below. Enough talking though, let's get right into it. Let's do this. Archer Tower Redesigns. All right, the Arch Tower has a complicated history with this design. It's gone through many changes since 2012. I mean, way too many to talk about. But there have been a couple times when the changes were far too obvious to not notice. Here is the original design. Then in 2013, some of the lower levels got more of that green banner. And then in 2018, Supercell really doubled down with that whole green banner thing and people hated it. Just five months later, they redesigned the redesign, <laughs> and honestly, I think this looks the best. It's amazing how many times the Arch Tower went through a redesign before figuring itself out. The old winter music. The music in Clash of Clans has stayed pretty much the same, except for new music that they've introduced for new features, obviously, but the default home village music, like 95% of it is identical to the original. However, the same can't be said for the old winter theme they used to use from 2012 to 2013. It's unknown why they stopped using it, but I'm going to play a bit of it and see if it sounds familiar to you. Bigger buildings. You're not crazy. Some buildings used to be bigger than they are today. For example, the lab used to be 4x4 and it is now 3x3. Three three. The army camp literally used to be bigger than a town hall. Now that's some crazy stuff. Today they're the same size, but it's funny thinking back to when these changes took place. People immediately went to Reddit asking why their lab was tiny. <laughs> funny looking back at it now. Ringus Bases. Alright, Ringus bases still exist, they just aren't called Ringus bases anymore, <laughs> who the f*** uses that name? But let me explain briefly what that even is. Ringus was a collection of bases made by a guy named P. Bach in 2013. A lot of people thought the ring design was pretty unique because it would make troops go around the base and avoid the center because there was a ring of resource buildings, which made it very, very effective against hog riders, which at the time was one of the most OP strategies. No one was safe. Unless you were using Ringus. <laughs> Anyways, Ringus would inspire a crap ton of other bases like this very popular one that everyone has probably seen. The community went bananas for these Ringus style bases. Over the years though, the bases lost their charm and became less effective and you know, the Hawk Rider was just nerfed along the way. But there's still many bases today that follow the same principles. Players back then might have just referred to it as a Ringus style base. Automatic Wars Today we have the luxury of opting out or choosing who will be in the war, but it wasn't always like this. Clan Wars used to be mandatory for everyone, whether you wanted to or not. F what you want to do, you're gonna war and you better attack. If the clan had 50 members and you search for a war, all 50 members will be in that war. It wasn't until about a year later after Clan Wars was added that you could choose your preference and leaders could select members. Crazy times. When we used to have four barracks. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. That was literally a few months ago. Selling decorations. When you were really broke and needed a little extra gold, <laughs> selling decorations, even at a loss, came in clutch every single time. Like not being able to train an army or hit necks is another level of broke that many of us experienced. It's actually way better today though thanks to free armies and the game having many ways to get loot fast. I just thought I'd mention that though because today you can't even sell them, you stash them. But it's one of those fond memories. The days when your name was permanent. Surely you remember first playing Clash and during the tutorial, you're asked to pick a name with a friendly reminder right at the bottom. Please pick a name you like because you won't be able to change it later. One of the hardest decisions ever, like whatever you type, that'll be your name forever. Forever! 
Now, obviously, it didn't stay like that forever. In fact, you could change it like two years after the game came out. We all got bamboozled, but we had no idea Supercell was gonna make that change, so picking a name was a huge deal. The Achievement Button. For some reason, I always forget that there was always an achievement button, and I don't know why that's important, it's probably not, but it actually moved locations a couple times. It used to be in the top left in the clan mail's place, and the clan mail was at the bottom, and then it was moved just under the village edit mode. Things were getting a bit crowded though, so when they reworked the profiles, I believe that's when they got rid of the button altogether and just put the achievements in the profiles, because who wants easy access to their achievements? <laughs> it's not like I'm out here finishing one of them every day you know it was probably for the best heroes before abilities i'm sure a lot of you remember when the king and queen was added to the game and something was different about them they didn't have abilities the king was pretty much a giant barbarian with a lot of hp and damage and the same thing goes for the queen just a big ass op archer heroes didn't really feel like heroes until they were given abilities a year later and you can only imagine how different that was for attacking not only did they spawn troops but they regenerated some of their hp and drop their own spell. It was crazy. Anyways, by the time the Grand Warden came out by 2015, this was already the standard for every hero after that. Toggle Heroes. Remember when you could toggle your heroes to sleep? <laughs> Did anyone actually use that when they logged off? I mean, I played with the button, it had a funny animation and sound, but I didn't actually log off with them sleeping. I wanted them to defend, and I guess this is part of the reason why this was removed. There weren't many scenarios where you'd want to save your heroes that bad when you were offline. I'm sure some players did, but to me, the heroes helped defend my base, so I never used it. But at least you can still do this with the clan castle today. Clown Wars. Supercell was back at it again in 2014 with a banger April Fool's joke. So, before Clan Wars was officially announced, the community kind of had an idea that that's exactly what we were getting, but it wasn't 100% confirmed. So, then Clash of Clans announced Clown Wars. <laughs> at this point, everyone knew they were trolling, beating around the bush. <laughs> you got us. Stop playing. Clan Wars was announced just a day later with this iconic commercial. I still have a vivid memory of that happening and I'm sure it'll trigger some nostalgia for some people by mentioning it. Good times, right? Southern Teaser. <laughs> okay, these bases still exist, but they're a lot less popular. I don't think anyone uses these anymore. 2014 and 2015, everyone and their mama was using a Southern Teaser base. It was the hottest shit around, even the guys in the leaderboards, because it was OP as shit. It's called Southern Teaser because the average player would attack the southern part of the base because it seemed easier, when in reality it was a trap. There were way too many defenses in one place for your troops to survive, so if you attacked from the bottom, the most obvious choice, you'd most likely fail. And that's exactly what most players did and going from the top wasn't all that easy either troops would walk around the walls to get to the defenses on the sides or wall breakers didn't break enough walls so it wouldn't work this was before siege machines so unless you master getting in from the top this was a hard base to beat over time though new strategies were developed new troops came out siege machines basically it's pretty easy to beat one of these nowadays and although the bases are still around they're not as effective as they once were. Round Dark Elixir Containers I'm sure a lot of you OGs have noticed that the Dark Elixir in the shop looks a little different. Well, I mean, honestly, the entire shop looks different, but the Dark Elixir! They used to be in these round containers just like the Elixir, but at some point, and I have no idea when, they gave them their own squarish containers, which actually makes a whole lot more sense because elixir storages are round and the dark elixir storage is like a square damage multipliers for a pretty long time certain defenses did more damage to certain troops this was probably done to balance attacks and counteract things that were too op so for example giant bombs did 1.5 times more damage to hogs Teslas did double damage to P.E.K.K.A.s, and the Eagle Artillery did three times more damage to Golems. These were slowly removed over the years, and today, none of these apply. To be honest, I didn't even notice the changes, despite using Golems and P.E.K.K.A.s a lot. <laughs> they did a pretty good job at balancing these troops and defenses after the fact. 
The old builder. There was something seriously wrong with the old design. Looks constipated or something. This design wasn't around for long though. By 2013, it already looked similar to how it does today, besides a few minor touch-ups. In other words, only 2012 players can relate. And I can't. <laughs> I started playing in early 2013. What a nightmare though. Back when walls had names. Yeah, a lot of people may not remember or know, but when Supercell would release an update that included new walls, instead of just saying the level, they had a name. For example, Spikes of Pain or Flaming Magma. These days, a lot of the upgrades are simply introduced by their level, and as far as I've seen, this whole naming upgrade thing hasn't happened for a while. I don't know, I just thought of it one night, and it's the kind of shit that keeps me up at night. Attack Timer. You know when you search for a base and there's a timer at the top that says battle starts in 30 seconds and then it starts to count down? Well, I think we all know that if you stay after the timer, nothing happens. You can still leave the match. It's not a big deal. You don't lose anything. But it wasn't always like this. <laughs> That's my favorite line. Back then, if the timer ran out, you were forced to attack that base or surrender, which lost you trophies. Regardless if you dropped anything or not, it didn't matter. If the timer was up, then the battle started. It's pretty hardcore. Today, the timer feels more like a suggestion. You don't have to attack if the battle begins. It's only when you drop something. So guys, that's 17 more things only Clash of Clans OGs may remember. I really miss this series, honestly. Feel free to comment more things for a future episode. But if you haven't seen the last four, I'd watch those by clicking here on this playlist. I mentioned a lot of stuff, so you might be surprised at what I haven't and have mentioned. Anyways, with that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Please like, comment, and subscribe. And as always, thanks for watching. Have a gaming out. Peace!